Well, so what I have here is 2 thirds, uh, 1 half, and 3. And what I want to do is show you how to find our function when these are our given zeros. Now, our function, or our polynomial that we're going to be determining, we want to have integer coefficients. So that's going to be kind of cause of co pose a problem when I have my zeros are fractions. Because usually what we do is we set each of our zeros equal to 0. Um, equals one positive 1 half. And x equals 3. Now, once we set them equal to 0, we are set them equal to x, then we set them equal to 0. So I'd add 2 thirds to both sides. But then I have x equals, or x plus 2 thirds equals 0. And then if I'm going to use that as my factor to multiply it by my other factors, I'm going to have fractions in those co as those coefficients. So I look for a different way to do this. And the way that I'm going to do this is by using my inverse operations. If I multiply by 3 on both sides, Therefore, I get 3x equals negative 2. Then I can add 2 to both sides, and I'll have 3x plus 2 equals 0. Now that's going to be a factor I'm going to use. I'll do the same thing here. Um, I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. And therefore, I have 2x equals 1. Subtract the 1, subtract the 1. So I have 2x minus 1 equals 0. And here, this is much nicer. Just subtract 3 on both sides. So therefore, you have x minus 3 equals 0. Now it's important to understand that 3x plus 2 equals 0 would have been is equal. You know, if you did, if you added the 2 thirds, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not mathematically incorrect. But the problem with that is these are you know, the exact same equations. They're equivalent to each other. However, if I'm going to use x plus 2 thirds as a factor compared to 3x plus 2 as a factor, you can see this doesn't have any fractions and this does. So when I multiply that out with my other factors, this is going to produce fractional coefficients. This will not. And our goal is to produce a polynomial without any fraction coefficients. All right, so now that we have each of our, um, each of our factors set equal to 0, now I'm going to undo my 0 prime property and set them all equal to each other equal to 0. And if you think about doing the zero product property, instead of working the problem down, if I was working the problem up, this is exactly would be the case that we do to find the zeros. If I gave you a polynomial that was written in its um, product of its factors, since, this, since the multiplication, since the product is equal to zero, you would set them all equal to zero and then solve, and that would be your list of zeros. However, we're not trying to determine the zeros. We already know the zeros. We're trying to determine what is going to be the polynomial. So therefore, then what I need to do is multiply them. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these by FOIL. So if I have 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 1. Um, and I'm just going to, my multiplication is going to be, eh, I'll break it out. That's fine. So in this case, I'm going to do my first two terms, which is going to be 3x times 2x. My outer terms is going to be 3x times negative 1. My inner terms is going to be 2 times 2x. And my last terms is going to be 2 times negative 1. So when I multiply these, 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 1 is a negative 3x. 2 times 2x equals 4x. And 2 times negative 1 equals negative 2. I notice that these both have a variable factor of x, so therefore I can combine them. So now I have 6x squared plus x minus 2 multiplied by my other factor, which I did not multiply. So I multiply these two, but I did not multiply by x minus 3. All right, So I'm kind of doing my work over there. Um, so now I need to apply FOIL again. But in this case, I'm not going to write out FOIL, because you can see it's a binomial times a trinomial. But remember, FOIL is just a nice way for us to remember to really apply the distributive property among polynomials. So what I'm really going to do is just multiply the 6x squared times x, 6x squared times negative 3. Multiply the x x times x, and then multiply x times negative 3. Multiply negative 2 times x, and then multiply negative 2 times negative 3. And I'm just going to write that down all below here. So 6x squared, and actually I'll use the vertical method. So 6x squared times x. 6x squared times x is 6x cubed. 6x squared times negative 3 is going to be a negative 18x squared. Plus, next row x times x is x squared. Since it's squared, I'm going to put it under the x squared so I can easily combine these. Um, and then x times negative 3 is going to be a negative 3x. Next row, negative 2. Negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. 
and negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 6. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add vertically. 6x six, six cubed, there's really no other terms, so that's going to be 6x cubed. Negative 18x plus x squared is going to be a negative 17x squared. Negative 3x plus negative 2x is a negative 5x, and plus 6. So therefore, my function, which I'll write first, f of x is going to equal 6x cubed minus 17x squared minus 5x plus 6. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write your polynomial when given uh, two fraction zeros and an integer uh, or as your zeros. Thanks.